Hello. 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 And here Audio working. Oh, look at that live stream. Audio is working. Can you, if you talk, does your transcriptions work? Yes. yes. Show subtitle. That is cool. Okay. Hello, hello. Hello. There hi. we go. And we have the chat on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you, Peter Morales. Hey, Scott. Hey. You see the closed captioning? Did you hit yeah. live transcript? I do, I see it. It's cool. It is cool. You full transcript. Oh, you. How are you guys? Doing well. I had a checkup today. I got my yeah. blood drawn. So, busy day. Busy day. Mm. So this Andrew. Is, hey Andrew. So this is our second one of these. We plan to do these regularly. Try to have them about once a month. It smells like skunk. Right? I, I think there must have been a skunk accident outside. That was me. Yeah. <laughs> all, the, all the way from the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Antonio. Very, very sorry. <laughs> Captain thought you said attorney. <laughs> oh, I see the chat. I have, okay. I have, a, I have a couple jokes, but I'm going to wait until 8. I'm going to wait until 8 because we're going to start the meeting like 8.03, 8.04, something like that. I give a few 8.05. Minutes. Yeah, 8.05. So uh, got a couple of quick ones. I'll wait till I'll, I'll save in two minutes for 8. <clears throat> You tell the inappropriate ones now, and then when everyone's on, you can tell the. Okay. <laughs> yep. I think just um, I'm noticing with these closed captions, we need to speak very articulately. Yeah. Well Hi, said. Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hey, Nicole. Nicole. If you're an attendee and you want to say hi, say hi. No pressure, though. No requirement to announce yourself, but we'd love to <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> I will try and speak as clearly and with performing arts diction as mm. I can. You better. Yeah, I tend to speak, I speak very quickly sometimes, so I have to be careful <laughs> how I present myself. Roger, what are you listening to? I got an old song by The Who in my head. Yeah. We, is it called? We won't. We won't be. We won't get fooled. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a great choice, right? Yeah. No, no, it's an obscure one that you never heard on the radio. Hi, hey, Louisa. Oh, who else? Louisa. All, right. All right, it's eight o'clock, so I can I can tell my jokes now. Um, right, joke number on. one. Um, let me make sure make sure I have these correct. Hold on. What do uh, Winnie the Pooh and Alexander the Great have in common? 
What? Anyone? Anyone? Um, they have the same middle name. Yep. Both of them. Same middle name. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we can't hear any laughter because everyone's on chat. I think next time I won't tell you the jokes early so that I can get more of a, Seems like a, a, raw, raw, a raw response. Now for the record, we've heard all of these. <laughs> In our, in our, in our practice test audience. <laughs> Hi, Dana. Z. Rose, Rose to the Z. Dana, Dana, I work in Piscataway with your, with, with uh, someone in your family. We, we have, we have talked about you on a few occasions. All, all good things. Don't worry. All good things. Hi, Rosie. Rosie. Hello. Okay, joke joke number two. Um, what does a fur trader listen to on Spotify? What, Scott? Trap music. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> Dana Wickens. Man. The face I haven't seen in a long time in person. Yeah. How many faces then, have you seen in person, Roger, lately? Uh, yeah. yeah. Number two. Alana, if you uh, <laughs> If you want to have joke number one, um, you can watch the recording later. Um, <laughs> Those of you just joining us. Yeah, you'll get to see that I, uh, that I started with one. And then the last one is, um, everybody's heard of, of Murphy's Law, right? If, if there's something that something bad could happen, it will happen. Um, but have you heard of Cole's Law? Um, you know, thinly sliced cabbage. I love that one. <laughs> You told little me that mayo. three brothers a few years ago. Because little we mayo, some yep. sugar sometimes, depending on the recipe. You know? that, that one didn't get a laugh the first time either. <laughs> yeah. I really like potato salad with sugar, like super sweet potato salad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alex, no. Sorry, no, no, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Oh, no. John's correcting you. <laughs> it's true. I should, I should have, I should have said Cole's law. Let's see if that. Oh, there, there we go. That, that works. It said Cole's la la. <laughs> <laughs> John. Does this have a count of how many people are in the chat? Does it have a yeah. Count? If you click on participants in the bottom. Um, you have fifty-one right now. Just by the panel. Oh, dig it. Okay, I see it. No. Oh yeah, fifty-one <laughs> including us. Forty-five. Oh, that's good. Participants, participants. Oh, wait, I'm actually, oh, wait, hang on. No, no, I'm not seeing it. It's at the bottom, you said, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say who, who it is, it just says how many. Yeah. But I'm you seeing, can I, go. I see in. names. I see oh, names. Oh, I can see names. I yeah. can see. I'm just not seeing the number. It's huh. on the top of that box. Uh huh. Just for people coming on right now, we're just waiting till 8.05 to get started. <laughs> one more, ready? And, and the, the team hasn't heard this one. So this You're is scrolling name. Reddit in real time. Yeah. Um, why are Ford cars um, so cheap? Because why? they're affordable. Oh, Ooh, that's rough. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Affordable. I feel like there's a way to tell that joke. Like, I feel like the there's a way to just say like afford, you know, afford. so you can afford it. Like something like you, so it's just like afford. Yeah, that's better. But I don't know what the, what the way, what the way to work it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chat says no. Sorry, Scott. <laughs> that says terrible. <laughs> Sorry, Rowan. It was a quick addition. I was trying to add something that the, the board hadn't heard yet. So didn't didn't have a chance to, to prep it, you know, internally. How many have we got now? 55. Uh, I think like 46. <laughs> we, 49. Just not seeing the number. Antonio, no, no. should we should we start? Let's uh Yeah, I mean right. let's get it going. Thank you everybody for coming. Yes, thank you everybody for coming. So
Um, welcome to our town hall. We, we, so this is, um, this meeting is in response to our announcement that in-person camp has unfortunately been canceled for summer 2021. We wanted to make it clear that we, but we wanted to make it clear that we will be having these town halls every month, regardless of whether there's good or bad news and to build community and update you on our operational and board progress. So this one is in regards to the news that we know was hard to hear, but that won't always be the case. Um, so what I, the question I wanted to address first was, or uh, actually we got many of the questions that we received this week were regarding tuition that was rolled over for summer 2021. First and foremost, we hear all of your frustrations and we acknowledge the get difficulty of this situation. I have been working incredibly hard this week to figure out what our options are for you and we know who each and every one of you are. We did not include any information in the letter that went out last week because it took us this whole week to look over all the different circumstances that families are in. We wanted to make sure that our answers were clear, complete, and final. We still felt it was important to make our summer 2021 announcement when we did, even though this issue has taken longer to resolve. The truth of the matter is, is that every family is in a different refund or rollover situation. And so there isn't a blanket answer we can just give to all of you. We will be reaching out individually to each family. In this past week, new information has come to light about how tuition rollover and refunds were handled in the past administration. And it's not how we had planned to move forward. Um, and in light of this change, we have had to revise our plans and those plans need to be tailored individually to each family. We hope we can work with all of you to resolve these issues fairly and quickly, but we are asking for your patience and consideration as we continue to figure out exactly how to move forward with each situation. So, and we thank you for your patience. Um, with regards to tuition for 2022, we are still in the early phases of building our budget and our structure. However, we will start tuition from the 2019 rates and restructure based on our new mission of having a sliding scale. As we develop this further, we will let you know. So that was probably the biggest topic um, from the submissions was about the refunds. Um, so thank you all for all the questions, as, as always. Uh, we're gonna move into some of the other ones. Um, first one here, we, we got asked in a few different types of ways. Basically, why can't it be that camp happens as long as you've been vaccinated or um, say 50 to 75% capacity? Um, what about social distancing, masks, testing, shortened summer, et cetera? Why didn't we decide that these were safe to try? And why did we decide so early? So I'm gonna have Scott answer that. Okay. Um, we understand that there are many that are frustrated with our decision to cancel our in-person overnight camp for the summer. In order to come to this decision, it was important to all of us to exhaust every realistic opportunity for an in-person summer. All of us on the board, we've all been campers, we've all been staff at Bucks Rock, and we know how important those summers are for everyone in the community. And if we could hold an in-person summer that's safe, inclusive, and authentic, we absolutely would have. Additionally, it is, it is of utmost important for us to make this decision early enough to respect everyone's summer plans, and that's campers, families, and staff, as well as be honest with you about the landscape of our efforts right now. We so appreciate all of the offers of help from the community, as well as the professional advice of those that have reached out to us with ideas of limited plans for two-week summer, or four-week, or six-week sessions. In arriving at this decision, we absolutely considered the viability of a shortened summer, the potential for a more comprehensive COVID vaccine rollout, at-home testing and quarantine, the creation of a bubble like the NBA, <laughs> socially distant activities that would have stripped down the program considerably as, as well. 
So first, we feel as though we are in a unique position compared to other camps across the country. We are dealing with both the building of a brand new business and new structure and working within the unknowns of operating overnight camp during an ongoing pandemic. If we only had to work through either of those circumstances alone, it would have been hard to open this summer, but at the very least we would have been able, we would have been more hopeful for overnight camp and would have waited longer to make a decision. The moment we knew we had to make the decision to cancel in-person camp in light of both of these factors, in the interest of full disclosure, we wanted to pass that on to the entire community. Secondly, information about vaccines for kids is extremely unclear at best right now. Both Moderna and Pfizer have suggested that vaccination trials for people age 12 plus through 18 will not be fruitful until fall or winter 2021 at the earliest. We simply don't know when this vaccine can be rolled out completely and we don't know with enough certainty in time for the summer. I'm also reminded of our lice outbreak in 2019 and how difficult that was to manage once it took hold. Lice is for the most part harmless, just gross, really gross, but harmless. And that was one of the more difficult days in, any, in all of my time at Bucks Rock, a few days. We learned a lot from that about how to mobilize the staff in an emergency and the need to be as, in, as transparent and clear with our parents as possible. But we also learned that the structure of Bucks Rock as you know it, as we know it, that authentic Bucks Rock experience and everything that comes with it is not equipped to handle an outbreak of something that isn't just gross, but extremely dangerous. Additionally, Going back to the experience of Bucks Rock again, the structure of an authentic Bucks Rock experience does not allow for effective social distancing. Think about all the shops that require close contact for safety or adequate instruction. So including, but not limited to, glass, ceramics, flame working, wood, sewing, metal, sculpture, and culinary. It's simply not safe to run a glass blowing or woodworking studio without staff being within six feet. And finally, and now considering our new, our new charter as a not-for-profit, we, we, we wish to wish to reiterate how the accommodations necessary to create a safe Bucks Rock experience in the midst of a pandemic would have inherently created an exclusive group of campers with access to greater financial means. We are fully committed to our new charter for an inclusive and diverse Bucks Rock and did not feel it is right to set aside those values that might, that might be inconvenient for opening the summer just to try and open. This new vision of Bucks Rock only works if we commit the time, energy, and resources to it in earnest. So thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for understanding. Not, not an easy decision. Um, it goes into another question that we got, which was, what about older campers and CITs who are missing a crucial summer? Um, and that's sad, it is. Um, I think it's hard on everyone to consider another summer without Bucks Rock, especially two years in a row. Um, but we, we definitely know how hard it is in particular for the campers who are in that CIT age. Uh, and there's a lot of you. There's going to be a significant number that are going to be 18 and 19 in 2022 and are no, are no longer eligible to be CITs. So we understand that. So we're considering some options. Um, brainstorming a bunch of ideas, how we could provide some unique, some unique opportunities for both this summer in the virtual programming, but also um, in person once we can reopen. Um, COVID has been hard on, on everyone. So just like so many have had their final years of high school disrupted by uh, distance learning, unfortunately it's affected our CITs as well. Um, just know that we recognize all of you. Uh, you're an important part of our community and we're going to do what we can to provide special opportunities for that group. And last thing I'll say is that while nothing can replace a formative CIT summer, uh, we know that. Um, we do hope that many of you might consider to maybe apply to be a counselor in the future. Um, we, we all grow out of being a certain age at Bucks Rock, but your time at camp doesn't have to end there. So just something to keep in mind. Another question about programs online for older alumni and international staff and alums looking to become counselors when we do open. Roger, I'm gonna have an answer. Okay, yeah, the short answer is uh, yes, this upcoming summer, there will be opportunities for older alumni to participate in our online workshops, programming and special events. You know, that would include live performances, get togethers, trivia, which you guys know that I'm into. And you know, I'll be putting together a podcast for interviews with various alumni you know, all, all sorts of different things going on. So if the question is about 
when we do open in person, yes, there are always opportunities for older alumni to apply to work as counselors, as, as usual. Um, you know, we value everyone that wants to be at Bucks Rock and has an experience with uh, what makes a successful Bucks Rock summer. So we can encourage everyone over 18 to apply to work at camp when we do open. Um, as Bucks Rock will be virtual in the summer of 2021, we intend for international staff to play a large part in that. And that goes for new and existing Bucks Rock staff as well. Uh, international staff might not be able to attend any in-person camps this summer because of new visa and COVID restrictions and all that jazz. But so our virtual summer will actually be better for international staff in 2021. And we are way excited to have you all on board and to make it happen. Uh, here's a cool question. We talked about renovations a little bit. Um, and some people said that they were interesting and help, interested in helping and asked if we would be open to reviving capable construction crew. So Alex, what is capable construction crew? <laughs> <laughs> Great. For those of you who don't know, the capable construction crew or CCC was a group of campers and staff in the early days of Bucks Rock who built and then maintained all of the facilities around camp. And as you look around camp, you can still find CCC plaques on many of the buildings that they built back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. I know there's one hidden in the weaving shop. A revamped version of the CCC is something we are actively considering to bring back in the near future. Um, Bucks Rock has a long history of camper and staff-led work projects. And this seems like a perfect opportunity to marry our unique opportunity for renovation with this tradition. So as our plan solidifies for this revamped CCC, we will let you know. And we are so excited to hear that you guys are as pumped about it as we are. So what type of outreach are you planning to target potential campers with limited financial resources? This is kind of having to do with some of the stuff we talked about last time. I'm gonna throw this one to Scott. Um, so this is one of our biggest priorities right now, and we have the time to do it right. We've already reached out to friends at Bucks Rock to initiate conversations with them to learn from their successes in this area. Additionally, we will be learning from organizations like the Fresh Air Fund and nonprofit schools in the New York City area to identify ways that groups are doing it right and adapt those approaches for our specific needs. Many communities also don't have a built-in summer camp culture as part of their lives, and it is our responsibility to work with schools, existing nonprofits, and local government to help people from different backgrounds and income levels learn about the benefits of summer camp and Bucks Rock. So that's that. Uh, so on a similar note of outreach, um, how will we reach out to campers with learning differences or special needs? Regarding these uh, potential campers, do we have plans to hire trained staff who are familiar with these needs, i.e. autism spectrum disorder, anxiety disorder, sensory processing disorder, et cetera? So Alec is gonna answer that one. So Bucks Rock has many current and recent staff members who have specialized training in those areas, such as autism spectrum disorder, anxiety disorder, depression, sensory processing disorder, emotional dysregulation, and ADHD, Scott and Roger for two. We will be relying on our considerable wealth of knowledge with these staff and more to add to our week of staff training and staff handbook to include more specialized training for those campers with these needs. Additionally, it will always be important that our overnight campers can thrive in an independent and self-driven environment of Bucks Rock. For those that might have trouble with this independence, our virtual program will be an opportunity to reach people of all abilities and we are excited to build this into our planning and create a program that can continue into the future. So one more question for Alec, who is the treasurer, how can I make a donation to support the future of Box Rock? So we really appreciate and thank all who have reached out with this question. Um, we are currently not accepting donations. Um, we are waiting to receive our 501c3 status. However, we will accept pledge letters, which are legally binding promises of future donations. And these pledge letters, sorry, these pledge letters are complete and ready to be filled out. You can make an inquiry through our website at bucksrockcamp.com and the pledge letters will be sent to you and um, you will be able to donate or promise to donate through those. So in your letter, you talk about rebranding and restructuring Bucks Rock. This is a question. In the next forum, 
please unpack what this means in the context of wanting to respect the values put forth by Ernst and Ilsa in light of the new charter vision. Um, Alex is going to talk about that. So thank you so much for this question. We really want to keep those values in mind and move forward into the future with them as much as possible. So we are dedicated to keeping the core of Bucks Rock the same as it always has been. In order to do that, we will be reaffirming our core tenets of Montessori instruction, which to us are self-discovery, experiential learning, student-driven learning, process over product, and mixed age learning, all occurring in a non-competitive prepared environment. We believe that Bucks Rock has long upheld all of these tenants and will continue to do so both in virtual and in-person programming. We are also inspired by Ernst's message of every summer provides an opportunity to build a new Bucks Rock, which is something that he said in the opening speech of the summer of 1992. What this means to us is that every summer will look different based on the needs and culture of the community of that summer. We will be flexible and we will evolve as our community does. We will be scheduling regular speak outs to provide opportunities for camper engagement and debate and information sharing as we are doing with these town halls before we even get started. Bucks Rock cannot happen without input from all of its members as it is something we all build together every summer. So in terms of what we're planning to do now, we will be doing an overhaul of our, our brand, which includes our website, our logo, and our outreach. The focus of our vision for all of this rebranding is self-discovery and growth. The older tree logo had the right idea of providing a strong supportive base while allowing for people to branch out with choice, independence, and agency. We haven't yet settled on our new logo, but we are discussing the process for creating one all together, not just us, but the entire community. And we're going to keep you in the loop as we decide on that process. And we're so excited to see what you guys have in mind. Thanks, Alex. So we can have, I, yeah, yeah, can I ahead. just quickly add to that? Yeah. Um, I just, something that I just thought of that is really important to us and that we've been, that we are thinking about with this, with this, um, just a really important part of the website is the platform that we are building for alumni engagement. And I just wanted to mention that because we really want to bring the whole community of Bucks. We want to connect, build this like all inclusive bridge or like network on the website for, for everyone. Once a Bucks rocker, always a Bucks rocker. And mm -hmm. there needs to be a place where we can, where we can all connect in creative ways. Yeah, the website, we have some amb ambitious ideas, I think, about how to be <laughs> really interactive. I'm excited for that. Um, I think this is the last specific question that we have. Um, once again, thank you everyone for asking them. This is, I guess, a shorter meeting than the last one. Um, and there's gonna be plenty more opportunities to ask questions if you feel like your question wasn't answered or if something else came up. Uh, this question is about the performing arts. What part will the performing arts take in the new reimagined camp that we that we'd like to talk about? So Antonia is going to answer that one. Um, so as we have stated in our previous town hall, the feel of camp will remain completely the same or not. I mean, I guess maybe not completely the same, but the feel of camp will remain the same. That's important to us. And when when we are able to go in person and hopefully online you'll get some of that feel um so performing arts will be pro pro um, prominently featured in our program as it always has been including theater dance music clown lsd costume set and studio 59 um if anything those programs will only be fleshed out more and access will increase in our new virtual setting, we plan on having substantial performing arts programming. Um, in a fun and engaging collaborative experience. Last summer, two of our most successful virtual programs were our clown program and our dance programs, both of which we are hoping to build on for this year. For example, we are hoping to have virtual concerts virtual clown and improv shows, 
live virtual shows, video compilations, and dance shows. Please stay tuned for further details. Um, and in term, oh, I guess in terms of renovations, visual arts and uh, we, we kind of talked about um, the our plans for renovations this summer and somebody asked if performing arts would be included in that and the answer to that is I mean the short answer is yes previous performing art heads of shops and alum will be a part of this process of planning and executing the renovations so of course there are opportunities to improve those spaces um, in conclusion first we all want to thank you so much for coming and submitting these questions we thank you all for your patience and understanding in our decision to cancel in-person camp. We share your disappointment, but we are all excited for the new possibilities and our next steps. We will have a February town hall to update you all. So please stay tuned for information about that and look out for more announcements as we put things together for this summer and beyond. They will be exciting and rejuvenating for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. Guys. you. Thank you. Guys. you. Thank you. Guys rock. <laughs> Bye, guys. Stay safe, all of you. Thank you. I want to see the thank yous rolling up. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, Matt. <laughs> Alana. OK. All right. Good night, guys. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Take care.